Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome to our Thursday Night Live where I share a tip or trick that I've seen or been reminded of throughout the week. So um, hopefully you find it useful. If you do, please let me know in the comments below and if you are live or even afterwards, feel free to ask any questions that you like. And if you enjoy this video, um, do remember that we go live here every Thursday at 8 p.m. UK time. And please do share this with your other bag making or sewing friends because it may help them as well. And if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and hit that like button at any point if you're finding this useful because all of that really helps me as a channel to find new friends to share all my knowledge with. So I can see there's lots of friends here tonight. I can see Karen Ann, Hannah, Maggie, Esther, Mel, Jill, Penny, Susan, Jane, hello, hello. Uh, we did have a little gremlin that meant I was a couple of minutes late, so apologies to those of you watching live. But let's dive in. I've got a little tip that I have seen a few times uh, this, this month, this week, that I thought it'd be good to talk about and share about because it may be something as bag makers that you haven't thought about or hadn't seen before, but it's definitely something that um, as sewers, if you have, if you're from a dressmaking background, especially, you're going to know all about, but you may not, like me, have thought about putting it into your bags. So here we go. I'm going to share um, my other camera. Let me just move a couple bits around. Da, da, da. And we're going to go there. You see my water? Let me move that out of the way. So I have prepped something up for us tonight because I thought it might be kind of useful to see. It's not a fully ready to go project, but hopefully you can use your imagination a bit and you can get an idea of it. I have pulled out my uh, Layla pouch. This is one that I know a few of the 77 Club members have been having a go at as well. So this is a simple boxy pouch. There's some bits on the inside. Let me take the, get rid of those. This is a simple boxy pouch, but it has a quilt as you go on the outside. Now the reason why I have pulled this out is because this has been made with bound seams on the inside, which is a technique that a lot of patterns have. That's why one of the reasons why I have included it in this pattern, because it's a great way to practice those seams, practice your binding. It also adds structure and what I like to call bones to the bag. So that all helps with the construction of the bag and it means you can use a fusible fleece rather than a foam to give it the structure. Um, so instead of doing binding, I thought I'd show you this technique. Now there is one caveat. You have to be careful depending on your pattern as to whether you are actually able to um, use this for your bag because your machine may not be strong enough to go through all those layers. So bear that in mind when you think about using this technique because it may not be good for your machine depending on what fabric you're using. If you're using quilting cotton, it's probably gonna be fine, especially if you're not using so much interfacing or fusible fleece or fusible foam. Um, but if you are using it with faux leather or even, even a waterproof canvas, depending on your machine, just bear in mind that it may be too many, many layers, it may be too thick to go through. So that being said, let's presume that your machine is all good to go and happy to go through all these layers. As you can see here, I've just, what I've done is I've just sewn the two long edges and I've made a kind of tube. On the inside, I have kind of simulated a bag by using, um, I haven't actually interfaced this, but I've used stabilizer, fusible fleece on one side. The other side, the pink, pale pink, I'm imagining is my lining. So I've got that interfaced. And um, I think it's not called a Hong Kong finish in dressmaking. It is called a, oh my gosh, I've completely forgotten the name. Someone will remind me as we go along. Um, but as we go along, French seam, French seam, goodness me, it's called a French seam. So we're going to imagine that this has got a zipper in or something like that. And there's a reason why we have done those two seams and that we can't do, um, this seam in a kind of regularly lined way that we have to bind this edge, but we're going to want to normally, you would sew it right sides together. So our spotty side is our right side. You'd sew it right sides together you'd sew along there, 
you would turn it, let me grab a pin so we can show you what I mean by that. Imagine that we've sewn along here, this is the regular way if you're using a, or you're doing a bound edge like we do in this pouch. You would sew along there, then you would flip it the right way out. Let's hope I don't stab myself when we do this. You would flip it the right way out and that would be your finished seam. You would bind the edge before you flipped it the right way out so that you get the inside, there's no raw edges, okay? But we are going to do a French seam, which means that we're actually going to sew it kind of the wrong way round. Hi, Michelle. We are gonna sew it with the wrong sides facing first for our first seam. Okay, so let me go across to, if my mouse is gonna let me, to, oh good, the camera's gone, one second. Don't you just love it when the tip throw, throws, a, tech throws a wobbly? Uh, hold that thought. Not that one. Is it that one? Oh my goodness me. Okay, one second. Otherwise, you won't be able to see my uh, machine. Oh, I do love it. I do love it when uh, this happens. Is it that one? It's not that one. Oh, good. Okay. There we go. Right, bear with me. Apologies, apologies. I know that you've got a black screen. One second. Okay. At least you haven't got a black screen now. <laughs> and you can see the machine. Hurrah. Oh my goodness, mate. Right. Let me try and get my other camera back on. Actually, you know what? Let's keep it. Let's keep it there. Let's not have any more gremlins. Right. So now at least you can see my machine. So we are going to go ahead and sew up that uh, seam line. Let me just check and can see your comments. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sew up that seam line along that edge, okay? But remember, this time, unusually, we are sewing it wrong sides together. So our seam would be on the outside, but we're gonna sew it with a thin seam allowance. So let's imagine we're doing it with a one centimeter seam allowance. So we're gonna sew it with a half a centimeter seam allowance, okay? So I'm gonna do regular locking stitch to start front and back. And I'm gonna sew along. Okay, like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim that down. Let's see if we can, I've got some scissors to hand. We're gonna trim that down so that it's quite close to the edge, okay? So that is, it's fairly close already, but we're gonna trim it down as close as we can, like so, okay? Then we're gonna turn it so that it is the wrong side out. Okay, so this is the seam we're doing. Turn it so it's the wrong side out. Then we're gonna sew it again along that edge and we're catching in that seam allowance. Okay, so that is why we have a smaller seam allowance because we've obviously got to allow for this next line of stitching. So now if I do it at half a centimeter again, that is gonna make our actual one centimeter seam allowance if that makes sense. So I'm gonna sew along, catching in with any luck, I'm gonna catch in those um, edges, the raw edges. Okay like so and then it's got all the edges all encased we don't have to do our bias binding 
And on the outside, of course, if we flip it the right way out, we have got a beautiful seam on the outside and a beautiful seam on the inside with no binding. So next time you're doing your boxy pouch and you're finding that you need to do a binding, why not try and do a French seam so it's all encased and you don't have to worry about bias binding. You may need to try it out on different projects, see how it works. Caveat is that I haven't actually tried it on the Layla pouch, but I can't see why it wouldn't work. You've just got to think about it a little bit methodically and do each one as you go. Um, and you've got to sort of think about doing it the wrong way out. So you have to do it, you sew it as if all the um, seams are on the outside first, and then each one as you do, um, sorry, every seam, you sew it outside first, and then you sew it, you flip it and you do the inside. So you've got to keep turning it inside and out as you go. But it can make for a really nice finish and it means that you don't have to do your um, binding if you don't want to or if you're a little bit less kind of happy with doing the bias binding or you don't like the finish of it. This is a, a fun little trick to doing it a different way. So hopefully you found that useful and helpful. Um, looks like the comments have stopped, so apologies if you have been commenting and I've missed it. Um, but thank you for joining me tonight. And if you did find that helpful, then do let me know in the comments below. And remember that I am back here every Thursday at 8 p.m. I'm going to go now because I've got to get ready to film a new tutorial tomorrow, which you'll be able to find soon, especially if you are a club member. Um, but do keep sharing the videos and thank you so much for joining me. I shall see you back here next Thursday at 8pm. Have a lovely evening everybody and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.